Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a video on video. <laughs> now the subject of video in Linux is quite a big one. You can watch it, create it, animate it, all sorts. So the best I can do even in a video of this length for a lot of it is just point you at specific areas and it's going to be up to you to um, to then research those packages uh, more effectively. There is also some technical side to a few bits and pieces which is going to come with the territory unfortunately. One of those things is um, down to legal restrictions. Codecs are one of those things. If you don't know what a codec is, it's a coder decoder and it's responsible for mathematically changing things um, like for example if you've got a WAV audio file which is raw you have to use a coder to code it into mp3 format for example and then you need a decoder to get it out of mp3 format to listen to it again so very much the same is evident in video now for a chunk of these codecs they are the legal property of various organizations and because of that and the legal licensing that comes with the codex is incompatible with the legal license for Linux so although the codex are available they just can't bundle them with Linux at the time that you install <laughs> at the time that they distribute the Linux um, installation if you install Linux keep an eye out for the option to install the optional extras or the extra codex or it's worded differently slightly for different installations of different copies of Linux but you should find it there and if you tick that box at the time of installation it will go out and get those codecs for you and bring them in to the Linux installation if you missed that then there is another option for you and you can get the package they are contained typically in packages for Ubuntu type like Ubuntu and Mint that is in the nature of a package and you will find it called the Ubuntu restricted extras so you can simply go either to a command prompt or to your package manager and install them sudo apt get install Ubuntu uh, no, <laughs> oh, there's quite a few possibilities. Restricted extras. So if you install that package, that will go out and get the um, that will go out and get the packet the, the codex for you, and other software of the same nature, and that will install it and bring it in. There's a few other things uh, that you need to do, which are of the same nature, and some of them is. Um, DVD support for example and um, DVDs are not supported out of the box for a simple thing for a, for, a sim, for, for the similar reason and you need to execute a command for that as well and that is um, again on the screen for you now I think it's already here yeah uh, it's libdvd pkg and again you should find that in the software uh, repository in fact, where is it? Uh, software manager. I think software manager is uh, the, the the one. Lib. Lib DVD hyphen hyphen. Uh, was it PKG? Uh, okay. <laughs> so much for software manager. Searching package summary, slower search. Um, <laughs> this is one of the odd times where things sometimes do not work correctly. Synaptic package manager. Uh, I tend to use synaptic package manager. Close, don't show that. Oh, good grief. There we go. So under Synaptic, 
it comes in and it's already installed it's, it's, it's in green so you could then mark it for installation and then apply and that would go get the lib dvd package for you hopefully it should also um, execute the following command which is package reconfigure and that will force a reconfigure of the of the package in which it will ask you um, this package automates the processing of launching downloads of the source files, compiling them and installing them. Please confirm whether you wish this to happen. And you just answer yes to that. Um, and then automatic update, which again you can answer yes to if you wish. Um, I've already gone through that here. <laughs> um, so that's DVD support and that will allow Linux to be able to watch DVDs. Blu-ray um, is a bit more complicated. You can see the commands up on screen now, which is to install a number of things. VLC gets installed, and you know, <laughs> just in case. The critical ones are these: uh, the library for AACS, uh, the library for Blu-ray BDJ, and uh, liber library for Blu-ray 2. Then you need to change into a directory for ACCS, and then um, uh, add. Um, add something to it uh, uh, cd into that uh, and transfer a file okay so you're making a directory in your personal home folder going in there and transferring um, a file um, into there and that will hopefully enable you to watch blu-rays um, in VLC um, on Linux I hope it's not that easy because um, Blu-rays, um, as opposed to, to DVDs, DVDs also all, all support the you know the main drive is um, is in the software. With Blu-rays, it's different because they've got all sorts of Java, um, which means that the creators could create their own menu structures and all sorts of funky stuff, um, and that's all got to be taken account of. So those are your uh, key commands. Uh, for doing that. There was a CD writing bug some time ago um, that was in some versions uh, so if you have a problem writing CDs um, execute those commands and that should get you out of it. So um, watching. <laughs> VLC is pretty much the go-to um, go-to player in many cases and that will allow you to do various uh, just allow now. I don't want to allow those. I also want to turn off um, in the preferences if it's in there. Uh, video subtitles enable on screen display. Oh, I don't want to show the media title on video start. That's a, a key one that I always use really disable. So under media um, and the VLC you can do a lot of things. Uh, you can open disk obviously and if I open the disk um, dev CD ROM, I think, is the standard when you've only got one device. Yep, and that is opening Futurama, which is in my DVD drive at the moment. So, as you can see, that's a DVD playing quite happily. I'm going to stop that. <laughs> you can also, if you view the playlist um, in VLC, you can also do things like if you've got um, local network devices like uh, UPnP, uh, yeah there you go, mum's watching TV at the moment so my Fox Media server is currently there and I can see the contents of my video and I can start watching things from here. The other thing you can do with VLC um, is for example if you uh, get the information about it you'll find that there's a streaming location and um, if I wanted to from the command line uh, I could use YouTube download to actually go and get that uh, file from the the, the the media player downstairs. <laughs> so that's pretty handy. So once you've got the actual URL, I could actually I am able to download it. Connection refused. Oh, mum's probably just just turned it off. <laughs> so we we're very lucky in that one. Yeah, half past eleven. She's probably turned it off. It's probably the end of the news or something. So there you go, you could actually download it and uh, 
once you've got it you could either compress it somehow because it would probably need compressing or do whatever you want with it or chop out the adverts even which is something that I usually do so yeah um, VLC can play files and if you go into the playlist you can see uh, the network side and if you've got any UPnP uh, you should be able to download um, one thing that I have found with this is that it'll just do standard um, um, standard resolution if I try and um, record a, a high definition stream um, on the media player there you see it's gone it's gone from the list it's not there mum switched it off <laughs> uh, you've got a few other things there you know network streams and you could play I, I could actually if, if that was running I could actually play the stream from direct from uh, the media player if I wished so you can do all sorts of things in there there have been I have had some issues with VLC um, in some cases which means that I am um, reverting to celluloid for some things um, VLC if I'm it, it, I have known it to crash um, uh, mint on on rare occasions but you know it's typically those rare occasions where I use it the most because I do use it quite often um, so for most I'm now using celluloid uh, just to view things if I just want to, to view straightforward media which is which is local um, so that's uh, viewing a lot of things I think that should get you most of the support that you need oh, one of the other things that I do is uh, in some BIOSes um, I'll turn off C state which is under the C CPU power management because that has caused some issues in the past and I've just got a note to myself to turn it off um, you may want to um, to investigate that so once you ha actually have um, uh, media what do you do with it well there's a few things you can do uh, one of them is um, is convert it KDN Live is a good conversion system and it can also rip directly from um, uh, sorry handbrake is, is one which can uh, will come to KDN Live later handbrake is a system which can actually read and rip DVDs um, so we're going to open the disk and that's just going to examine um, future armor <laughs> now handbrake is cross-platform but I found that for some reason it works better under Linux than it does under Windows um, Windows it just seems to take a bit longer I don't know why so from here um, you've got the various tracks that are there uh, these are obviously individual episodes and you've just got to work things out now the one thing with VLC that VLC will give you um, when you're playing um, a, some media when you're playing a disc and you are going to have to um, be careful of this in some cases I'm just going to turn music off just in case it trips anything uh, episodes is episodes do not always um, uh, coincide with the track numbers so if you um, play uh, one whoops <laughs> play that I'm just going to play that chapter for a moment and there you go up in video uh, you have video track um, no it's under playback chapter title yep under playback title that will tell you what title is currently playing and uh, you can then use that and you know which title you're um, you're ripping at, at any particular time so uh, that's one easy way to find out what's going on it's not so easy when it comes to blu-rays and we'll cover that as well the other thing uh, that you need to be careful of is subtitle tracks and <laughs> it gets complicated from a number of angles and also the audio side <laughs> it, it's not straightforward it's not easy the few things you have here is a summary of what's going to, going to happen also note that you have auto crop and uh, so when you load in a track m make sure that auto crop isn't cropping it oddly you may have to turn it off and adjust it yourself sometimes so uh, cropping you want to uh, be aware of you can 
turn that off and then you've got the loose crop options there uh, filters I don't generally touch video now this is interesting uh, video if I can bring up my handbrake on this one I'll show you a few things now it has changed um, in a number of cases um, I will go for bitrate and I will go for 2400 at a constant frame rate not a peak and I don't usually use two pass encoding there are sometimes extras uh, once you've done things you can actually save the preset um, so set save as save the preset um, category general um, uh, make it the default there we go so I think that's most of it for here that's what I do constant frame rate bit rate 2400 and I'm using the H264 encoder and that's roughly where I go for on this audio um, you'll notice that it's automatically picked out an audio track some DVDs um, particularly if they were manufactured in some other countries will have other um, uh, other um, languages here um, typically uh, a common one is like uh, the entire of uh, Star Trek I've got the, the, the DVDs to those and they were created in Germany by the looks of it because the default track is, is uh, was German so I had to actually delete the track and then add the English track in on everything note here you've got director's commentary so, so you've got various source tracks so if you wanted you could rip this with the director's commentary rather than the, the Blu-ray's own I will just cancel that um, track selection now this is another interesting one um, I usually have first track marking uh, matching selected languages available languages any um, typically you could have English in there um, the other interesting thing I do is DRC, DRC and I usually have that at 4 and I will then save that preset why DRC is dynamic range compression and uh, what that means basically if I get my handbrake out so I can see what I can see that you can see in a lot of movies they have the, the quiets are very quiet and the louds are very loud so dynamic range compression brings that together as be, the quiets are very quiet the louds are very loud and the systems the blu-ray players the dvd players know how to handle it you know it, it'll automatically handle it for you but when you're actually ripping off it won't <laughs> so by drc uh, adjusting that to 4 that'll do the compression for you as part of the audio and I have that set as a default uh, that's the one thing that I will do under track selection and I will typically save that you could um, slam English um, as one of the um, one of the language here uh, selected languages where the heck is English <laughs> it's not totally going in um, in alphabetical order here so you have to find English and then add it to the selected languages hey ho I've, I've never actually done that that's something I'll have to work through and audio pass through AAC I think that's what I've also got on here oh, I'm pretty sure of it and then that is saved as part of my defaults Subtitles is another interesting one and pretty much you're going to have to look out for these things whenever you're actually doing any ripping and that is under my track selection selection behavior is none and I also um, uh, take off where is it under track selections yeah it is none selection behavior none and I do not add a foreign audio scan, scan pass but typically you have to actually have to have something selected that's got it I think in order to take that off selection behavior or you've got to you've got to do something I think the, the trick is is to get that off um, when the default it may it may actually come as as nothing I don't know burn in behavior is the other one key one and that I think I have as first selected tracks 
Blu-ray subtitles. Yeah, I think one the only thing that I can see um, automatically is that I have that as selection behavior none, and hopefully that should come up with no subtitle when you do it. See, that's a foreign audio scan. Uh, track selection. There's got to be a way of getting that off. Add ah, there you go. Add that, then remove it, then you can do it. Haha. <laughs> So add something into the selected languages, then you can untick it, and then you can remove the selected out, uh, and that will stay off. So if I then save that uh, preset, um, that should stay off. So then when I actually go to select another track, there's no um, subtitles in there. It will then be up to you to get the subtitles. Um, typically, also, when you're viewing something in VLC, you can see the subtitle track. Um, if you if you're facing more than one track, sometimes the subtitle track numbers will the number of subtitle tracks present will be an indication of which subtitle of which track is being used. This is typically the case if if you're bringing off um, uh, Blu-rays, for example, you can end up with more than one copy of the main presentation. You can watch it but typically when you're watching Blu-rays it won't tell you which subtitle um, in other words it won't tell you that this, for example in here we can get the which playback title it's doing um, here um, on Blu-rays sometimes it won't it won't tell you which actual track number that it's coming off so one way of working out which one it is is to have a look at the number of subtitle tracks that are available to you that can sometimes be a, a bonus to working out which one is which <coughs> sometimes you'll get more than one presentation um, because they have injected um, like for example um, signage in a film if um, a film has more than one language track sometimes it can have more than one video track because um, um, they'll change the actual signs say for example if you're looking at an advertising billboard in a film they will change the advertising billboard to match the language of um, of the of, of the audio track <laughs> to make it better better experience for the viewers in other countries so if you're wondering why have I got more than one track here that could be one of the reasons and you're just going to have to watch the tracks to work out where those subtle things are to work out which one uh, matches you best so that can be very difficult but also subtitles can have their own oddities as well some of which are known as forced subtitles now if I come across subtitles I normally burn them into the video and the reason I do that is so that they're always there you haven't got to switch something on that they're always going to be in the video and you haven't got to rely on um, the video player being able to read the subtitles they're always going to be there no matter what, what you play it on because it's burned into the video itself <clears throat> but the interesting thing is forced subtitles let's say for example you've got Star Trek um, and they're up against the Klingons you'll have subtitles you'll have a number of different variants one is subtitles for the whole thing and some of it is just subtitles for the Klingon language so there's a couple of different ways that they can do this they can either have two separate tracks one of which is the default track um, which only has subtitles for the Klingon in it and a second track which has um, um, every, which has everything in it or they can do one track with everything in it and mark the Klingon section as forced <clears throat> so you've got to work out what's going on you can either um, you've either got subtitles in a single track and the the foreign um, speech is marked as forced in which case forced subtitles only would work or you've got to work out which uh, which of the tracks it is and here we've got um, English closed caption wide screen letterbox and in different languages um, so sometimes you'll have about four or five different English variants purely because um, of, of the different options that are in there now again under VLC you can see which subtitle track it's using and you can s and you can change the subtitle track you're using and see what comes up view the various pieces of the of the film to see what happens otherwise good luck <laughs>
<coughs> and again, once I've got that off, um, yeah, um, this is the burning, burning for deficient players DVD and Blu-ray. That will mean that whenever I do it, burning will be the default, and it should uh, default anything. So if I actually go to subtitles now, and add and add to English closed caption. Um, that should in theory be, I may actually have to restart um, thing, but that should be ticked by default as a, as a result. You have a number of other options here and um, what you'll typically find is um, a lot of the manga um, on various sites will have, and I'm just going to have to refer to my notes, um, you'll have various odds and sods and bits and pieces and my notes say, because I keep this thing, um, uh, if you um, go and get them, you will have to go and get them um, uh, right SRT and then you've got the, your location of the file. What that does is it brings down the subtitles as well in a separate file. So you will get the anime, you will get the subtitles in a separate file, but then you've got to merge them in Handbrake. And to do that, you have to use a specific option, which is um, to add the subtitles in importing using SSA. And then you point um, to the file that came down and hey, and, and there you go. And you will then get it. Life update part. Oh, right. <coughs> so that's typically how you would then um, burn in, um, how you would take an anime uh, file, uh, download it with the separate, because um, they're normally in Japanese, download it with the um, subtitles, and then burn them together in the one output track. And there you go. So there's quite a few things that you need to be careful of there. Now, uh, Blu-rays. How do you rip Blu-rays? <laughs> now, Blu-ray was... Oh, God. Why do they do this shit? I actually stopped using Firefox. I'm actually using Vivaldi now. And I'll cover that in, an, in, in another video as to the whys and wherefores. But... Uh, uh, there's something called make MKV. <coughs> now what happened with Blu-ray is for quite some time um, there was an encryption key or there were a variety of encryption keys and eventually it was only a matter of time the master encryption key ended up getting out there and that was pretty much it. <laughs> um, Blu-rays could be freely um, uh, ripped and dealt with uh, and part of that is what came off that is make MKV. Now MKV takes a bit of getting used to. Um, it's not free. Um, it's their download for Windows and Mac. Um, if you want the Linux version, you're going to have to find it. And there is, um, if you do a search for MKV for Linux, you will find it. But it's not straightforward you actually have to build it and there are compile and make instructions if you if you find it <coughs> and um, make MKV download install make MKV on Linux there is a make MKV uh, on Linux step by step MKV make a US there were instructions on the MKV <laughs> site itself, which I think is um, which I think is slightly better. Uh, forum mkv.com. There you go. And how to install Make MKV for non-Debian Linux like OpenSUSE, etc. Make MKV for Linux is available. You will find these updates and they will be updated even though it shows um, shows a while. You can get the download links. This is, as you can see, this is updated because it's linked to 1.16. So you need those two sections. Uh, there's the 
get um, sudo there's the installation for all the libraries you need so you just execute that then you um, jump into the um, folder where the OSS package is execute those commands go in for the makemkv bin package execute those commands and away it will go and you've then got the whole thing installed for you um, <coughs> I haven't got it installed on here I, I have actually uh, got a license for MKV um, I find the ripping useful because a lot of the DVD manufacturers I mean we're in a very strange time at the moment I mean I buy my, my media <laughs> but I can't always um, view it on the move you know when, when you've got a mobile phone or a laptop so many devices nowadays come without any sort of DVD at all I'll leave that in there for the time being just in case you know you need a file you don't um, you know you, you can't put the DVD in your mobile phone <laughs> a lot of laptops and other things now are coming without it uh, without a DVD reader or even a CD reader of any shape or form so you're stuck a lot of the stuff that you buy that comes with digital versions you have to sign on to different sites you have to install different software and um, you have to have an internet connection at the time you're using it usually unless you pre-download it in which case it takes up shed loads of space on your device and um, so many of them are just Disney for me is the worst is you, you put a disc in and you are just locked into like 15 minutes of adverts and especially if you you're you're putting a DVD in for a kid, it's the maximum in nag power. You know, the the kid then the the, the child then wants this, that, or the other, and it, it's nag power. The poor parent is is back back up against the wall, and they disable a lot of the buttons so you can't skip forward. You know, it there's a lot against them. <laughs> I still won't go for streaming media, um, for a variety of reasons. Um, you know it, it's just I'd rather buy the DVD or Blu-ray and in order to watch it on what I usually watch it on I'll, I'll rip it but you know <laughs> buy the media don't just pirate it buy it is the obvious message but this will get you around these things uh, Blu-ray is a lot more difficult um, to to rip there's a lot more if you think that those odds and sods that I've just explained for um for DVD is difficult <laughs> yeah um, Blu-ray adds a few layers on top of that as well and then once you've done that Make MKV gives you a load of files very large files and in some cases where they've got you know <laughs> one of the tricks they did to avoid copying was to um, mix the files up so you can put a disk in you'll get 99 presentations and each of them is in a different chapter order so when you actually rip the disk you're ripping you've got to have terabytes of storage to rip it to because it will make so many different copies make mkv does have a way around this which is if you've got java installed you can point mkv at the java installation and it will use java to read the scripts that are on the blu-ray it will then know which one is actually the main presentation <laughs> so that's way, one way around it so using that you can pretty much get hold of media uh, rip it, convert it any which way you like um, that's most convenient for you um, obviously um, keep it legal or as legal as you can um, once you've got the blu-ray files obviously the, you've then got to use handbrake um, open single thing, open single file and then you've got the options again um, you know my defaults so hopefully that'll work for you you're always going to lose something in the compression particularly in the blacks but hey ho video editing <laughs> is another thing and I actually don't have the stuff installed so we're going to go get it <coughs> and this is where another um, another issue comes and that is the issue of uh, let's have a look there you go app images 
I'm just going to have to unprotect this so I can see what's going on. You can see you've got a number of options. Ubuntu PPA, um, which will get um, the package. And for that, what you do for the PPA, for the package, <coughs> is you're adding a repository. As you know with most of the applications, you're pointing at a, a repository, a library of all the packages. But KDN Live is not in them. So what you actually have to do is then um, tell the system, as well as this package library over here, I want you to look at that package library over there. And that is uh, that is pretty much one of the uh, better ways of doing it. So we're going to add this repository in. It's going to make sure I am who I am. That's going to ask us to uh, press enter because there's that there's a, a trust issue going on here. You are only adding PPAs that you trust. Uh, so that's the KDN Live team. We've added that one in, and then we ask it to update. Um, everything. Now how would you do this in graphics mode? Um, typically if you were um, software sources is where you would go and you have the official repositories the official libraries of where it will go to have a look and you can see in here that we've got uh, the ones that we just added <laughs> So you could add in here, and you would add the PPA in there. So you would take that PPA stable, and in your sources, you would add it there. <coughs> Sorry about that. And that's where you would add it graphically. We've already got this one. Then when you actually ed uh, enter the, um, the software, uh, synaptic, uh, God. it's not my usual password either, it's a junk password. It will then update everything. It will then, uh, the update process is the consequence of going off to all the libraries and say, hey, give me a list of the books you've got, give me a list of your packages, and you can, um, uh, references, where's the update? Uh, it should do it automatically probably uh, but that is the process and I think that if we actually look for KDN Live here now we will find it because it's already updated it now rather than me add it here which I would normally do I will just add it here mark for installation and it will say there's additional stuff that I need here I also need these things so can I go and get them as well uh, you can see various libraries um, melt it needs to merge stuff and it needs uh, some breeze uh, KD and live data a few other things so by marking those we'll say okay you're okay to go and get those as, as well so we will now apply that and are you sure you want to do things that's what's going to be installed that's what's going to be unchanged because they're packages that are already needed now note this process of packages and effectively libraries, extra bits and pieces because we'll be coming back to that in a minute. Apply the following changes, now it's going to go get them and it's going to install KDN Live for us. Now while that's doing that we'll discuss one of the other ways which is app image. <coughs> this was all it's a long-standing thing and it was all about reinventing the wheel a long time ago oops it, it knows that that's there <coughs> it knows that I've, it, it tried to make a pop-up and the pop-up was blocked by my protection system so hey ho um, what happened was for a lot of software it will use the same code you know a lot of software will rely on the same code time and time again and in the early days disk space was rather restricted so they created libraries and 
they were supposed to effectively be black boxes, you know. So in theory, it shouldn't be when the library itself is updated. Any piece of software will say, oh, I need that library. So you'd have to go out and get that library. It's just done a lot of that for us automatically with the installation. But then you'd have two versions of software needing the same library. And there are checks in the software as to the version of that library. And sometimes where the library gets updated, sometimes some of the software will say, oh, I can't, that library's too new, I can't use it, and throw a wobbler and stop working. So what's, what they actually do these days, um, if you go for them, and there are various versions of this, we'll come across it more with Snap in Ubuntu later on in a few videos, but they'll give you an app image. And we are now downloading the latest app image as well for me to show you that working. The app image has everything it needs in the one place. So all this dependency hell, as it became known, w w is, is basically rendered null and void because everything that the application needs is there. Um, we've now got, these days, we've got the storage to be able to handle it. And uh, other things like flat plaque are basically around the, sim around the same view. Um, don't need libraries, don't need dependency hell, it's all in one and that's it. So uh, six seconds left on that, where is the other one? Synaptic package has done that and that's there. So the package is now installed. Um, debugging symbols, we don't need those. So that has now downloaded, um, downloaded that. Uh, go to download page, uh, show in folder, that's what I need on this version. So if you see an app image, that's what it's about, the app image itself. When you install via the package manager, whenever you, um, then what can happen is that it's able, the update manager is able to see and say, hey, this package has been updated. <laughs> uh, do you want to go and get the latest? And, and, and then you can, and then you're always dealing on the latest version. With, whereas with app images, it doesn't, because it's self-contained, it doesn't check for updates. You've got to go and get the latest version yourself, uh, pretty much. So, um, with KDN Live, we should see it under, uh, there we are, sound and video, KDN Live is now there. I'm actually using an older version of KDN Live because all they did with this video track split, ooh, that looks funky. Um, uh, I didn't, I, I wasn't particularly fussed with. Um, we'll come onto that in a second when we come to use it. But the app image, this is now self-contained. You've typically got to go into the properties of the app image and you've got to go into the print, print permissions and allow it to execute as a program. And that will then allow you to um, open it and it should then, in theory, run. There you go. Same version. Doesn't matter. Makes bugger all difference. And there we go. We have KDN Live. While we're here, we might as well go through it. <laughs> and I'm going to have to learn a bit here myself. Uh, what do we have? Um, Dorking Journey. Uh, this hasn't been used yet, but this is one. Uh, switch clip to the profile. Now, um, this has noted the um, the resolution and quality of the clip that I've just um, just unloaded. And it says, "Do you want to switch?" Because I'm currently in 1080p, 25 frames per second, and this is uh, 1080i, 29.97, and it could um, switch the whole profile to that if I wanted. In which case, I'll split it. I'll, I'll switch it. Now it should lock it to that. So any, anything you can see, 1080i, um, 29.97 frames per second, and that's about it. You do have um, project, and you can um, have various uh, projects. And if we go into settings, configure KDN Live, you will find all sorts of stuff under which are also the project defaults and the default that you're going to um, have um, loaded. 
so you've got various things there and you can ha you can put custom ones in as well how many video tracks or audio tracks are, are automatically loaded um, you've got various things in your timeline um, I'm not used to this version so hey ho you'll find odds and sods um, it's worth um, taking the time to look through these to see what they're going to do and to work out how you prefer to operate um, in uh, in uh, KDN Live uh, environment typically don't do a lot of stuff about that thumbnail colors speech to text ooh that's new <laughs> download speech models mm, interesting uh, options on playback uh, it's worthwhile spending the time to uh, it can capture as well by the way although uh, personally I don't use it to capture you got a jog shuttle if you've got a jog shuttle device um, you can hook that in as well um, you got a lot of transcoding options in here um, yeah I've forgotten which which one I'm using yeah but you got all sorts of trans coding and it's, it's worthwhile spending some time in here and going through all these settings um, right in fact I now need one that's got audio in it uh, uh, let's go for the main title what the hey then you drag them into your timeline Whoops, it's crashed. Ha 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 ha. That's the app image that just crashed, and I don't know why it just crashed. Um, okay, let's try the other one. <laughs> Good grief. Recover. So it knew what we were doing, um, knew where we were. Uh, let's just try a uh, main title in there to 2017 main title, and it's in. Yay, it worked. <laughs> um, I think if I wanted to keep my KDN Live up to date, I would be using the PPA version rather than the app image. Um, but I don't want to deal with this stuff. So we're going to drag this in, and the first thing you can see is we've got two video tracks, two audio tracks, and it has put in a separate track um, for this. Um, Dorking Journey. They are. There's no audio in this, um, pretty much. Uh, this is pretty large. Yeah. Uh, Stalking journey monitor. Yeah, th this also works in a slightly different way. Uh, so you've got various options here. I typically don't use um, the clip monitor. I just use uh, this one, which is the project monitor. Yeah stop <laughs> so it, it's got a lot in it uh, how do I close that uh, can I add it into there because you got the project manager and monitor the clip monitor that's what I want to get rid of and you got the library but I can um, <sighs> monitor let's get rid of the clip monitor and the uh, clip monitor and the library uh -huh, there we go now we've got a bit more room and we can see what's going on in there ah, there's a load of things that you can and can't do uh, for example you can add effect in certain effect uh, volume key frameable you see this is another one uh, one of the reasons I, I'm not uh, uh, nice to this one you got change speed there uh, time remap so you could change the the speed of the clip, speed it up or slow it down. Boom! There you go. <laughs> that is an instant speed change. Insert an effect. Insert a composition. Compose and transform. Okay. One of the things I'm going to do is move these. I'm just going to shift that down to there. It won't go. Okay. So we'll just kill that. Move that up there. That's gone into audio to talking journey. Now what I'm going to try and do is try and do a picture in picture which is one of the things that I actually used to create this <coughs> that was load of picture in picture and uh, compose and transform oh that's easy on the version that I'm using I've got a lot more things like one of the things that I'd like to do normally is change the volume is change the game and that volume is key frameable um, I think that that would actually work 
throughout the whole thing gain ah there we go gain 31 decibels and that should hopefully work for the whole thing because you've got to start and finish there uh, keyframes are very interesting I will um, move this <coughs> you have the so you can see what's going on in a lot of the options you have keyframes and as you can see there you have a keyframe noted by that diamond and then you can uh, go in uh, switch to where you want to do and you can add another keyframe where you do it in here I'm not sure um, or have you got to do it up here <coughs> uh, add key disable presets save effect save effect stack because you can stack all these effects I want to add a keyframe <laughs> where is the keyframe add normal mode there should be a simple button to add keyframes in here uh, is that it? Oh, thumbnail, show markers there should be a very simple button here to add keyframe and I can't see it uh, do they insert? nope it's not responding to that this is one of the real problems with um, uh, with this stuff where is the add keyframe spacer tool, slide tool, ripple tool uh, we'll come back to that once I can find it we'll shift back to the composite and transform so you can see that this is on top now and I'm actually going to click on the comp composite and transform section there that's going to give me a number of options under here and again you've got this, the, the same keyframe thing which is going to drive me nuts but we could change it to about 30% and the minute I click away from that it should do that for me and then I can alter the position and you can see the position ending up in there so you can do that so now we have uh, the, one of the most simple effects which is picture in picture and uh, you also have opacity um, so what I can do, what I usually do is um, I've got to have the sodding keyframe around here where is the keyframe? because what I would do is have a keyframe here with the opacity 0 and a few seconds later I would add another keyframe and change the opacity to 100% so the picture in picture would just flow onto the screen where the hell is it? is it that? nope, cancel is it that? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, good grief. How do you add a keyframe in here? Let's try and bring up the version of KDN Live that I normally use. Which, for reference, uh, is version. It's not telling me the sodden version number. about KD, about KD in life, version 17.12.0 that's what I normally use and when I am doing picture in picture which I'm going to try and do now on this one um, which is if I just go for uh, something simple I can go for that I can put that there I can put that there and I'm just going to add a transition composite I prefer it. Uh, composite. Oh, I've just got an add button. <coughs> There's just an add button. And there just doesn't seem to be an add button here. Urgh. That's annoying. So where do I add? In there. There's probably a key to do it or something. But yeah. What do you know? go to next keyframe add keyframe oh that's stupid <sighs> I don't believe this it's there it's just grayed out for some reason and it's usable it's there it's usable it's just grayed out for some stupid reason so there you go add keyframe opacity 100 uh, we'll go back to that keyframe opacity 0 so you'll see that if we uh, were to play through um, the keyframe would then come up 
uh, yeah you, this is not a very powerful machine so um, it handling this amount of video is not straightforward but KDN Live is uh, a pretty good um, system for quick uh, quick and dirty editing which is pretty much all I do now a number of, no, we're not going to save that, good grief what a mess <laughs> we're going to go to have a look at um, something else which is DaVinci Resolve now DaVinci Resolve is uh, is quite a uh, quite a chunky thing to DaVinci Resolve I don't use it myself uh, my design this just boom boom uh, okay let's have those I think that there is a free uh, version as well uh, overview what's new how do you get it where's the download <laughs> Um, oh yeah, DaVinci Resolve, the free version, or you could buy it for $300, near enough. Um, so you can get the free download, uh, free version if you like, and that is a serious piece of kit. Um, <laughs> if you're going to do video editing and get serious about it, then DaVinci Resolve is something that you should look at. There is a fair old learning curve with it but with like many other um, cases there is uh, there's a lot out there um, it's just going to take you a lot of, be aware that you've got to invest some time um, into learning this and for me it just wasn't um, wasn't worth the time investment I would not get out of it um, what I put in time wise <laughs> and that is um, the kind of decision that you're going to have to make throughout everything pretty much yeah it's it's a lot of serious kit edit color fairlight fusion uh, it, Hollywood's number one post solution <laughs> high-end professionals working on feature films and television shows use DaVinci Resolve more than any other solution I think it's um, is that going to tell me? Uh, oh, here we go. Mac, Windows, and Linux. It's fully um, platform agnostic. Well, as, as much as you can be. <laughs> and, yeah. If you're going to be serious about your video editing, that's probably something that you want to have a look at. I don't use it myself because it is so powerful and so awesome that, yeah, it it, it is well beyond me. <laughs> I mean, I can do things like this. Which you may have seen um, on um, titling some of my videos. That's a 2017 main title. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, what do you say, really? It's, I was able to do that in KDN Live with no problem, um, because I, I knew KDN Live reasonably well enough that I could do something like that. I was very comfortable with it. Um, as opposed to um, DaVinci Resolve, it, it's a pretty serious kit. These are not the only video editing tools out there. There are many of them. Um, it, it's gonna it, again. It's a case of time sync, and how much time you want to put behind investigating them, trialing them, seeing which one works better for you. And yeah, good luck, pretty much. The last thing we're going to look at is Blender, and if you know uh, my old um, channel titles, this is the ending, I think. That was done in a system called Blender. And you've probably heard of Blender. <laughs> I do actually have the files, the Blender files that I used to make that. And you have various files um, that make that up. 
um, ratios, JPEG, uh, concrete, new, and the various concrete textures that were used. Unfortunately, um, if I try and load these old Blender files in the current version of Blender, they go tits up. They go absolutely bonkers, and they just throw their throw throw <laughs> throw the toys out of the pram, and it just blows up. I do not know why, uh, but hey ho. And it took a long time. The full um, it took a week. It took about three and a half days to go through the tutorials to learn to create the three D landscape, and that's what you're creating—a three D landscape. But rather than animate things, um, I just moved the camera <laughs> angle, which is pretty much all I could do. Um, <coughs> where is Blender? It's not installed, is it? <laughs> oh, it is in there. Uh, it's not under there, is it? Can anyone see it? <laughs> oh, it'll be under graphics, Blender. Duh. Blender is a full 3D animation system and uh, it's free and what you get for free is absolutely amazing um, quick setup Blender select with left right play tool search Blender dark next oh what the hell um, let's get away from that so what you're dealing with um, how do I do this ah that's how you do this you have a scene um, which you build you have lighting sources, which is like that one there. Um, I can't move it because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, there must be a way to move it. Uh, you also have up there at the top right, uh, you can see a circle with ZXY and I'm moving by dragging that. And then you have this, which is the camera. And then you can move the camera along timelines. It is very powerful. Um, th th there's no other way that I can describe it. It's a hell of a learning curve, but if you're into animation, um, whereas previously uh, the people like Nick Park and all the rest of it were doing like stop motion animation, um, pretty much everybody's doing that animation now in uh, in Blender um, or other variants thereof. As to the power of this. Um, don't save. I'll leave it to you. But there's a number of things that you can watch. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did it. Blender.org? Or is it studio.blender.org? Yeah, studio.blender.org. And if I um, allow that lot temporarily, you can see pretty much uh, there's um, a number of things that you're going to be able to view in here which will show you what Blender can do and uh, projects there should be projects around here films oh films this will typically show this is a sort of a demonstration I mean some of the earlier films were pretty good Elephant's Dream is a bit of an odd one um, never got to never got to grips with that three of the better ones uh, yeah are, is Big Buck Bunny Sintel and Tears of Steel. Tears of Steel is actually a merge of uh, live action and Blender footage. Sintel is a short story which is basically uh, and Big Buck Bunny. Um, Sintel is sort of um, almost photorealistic if you know where it's going and this was in 2010. <laughs> you know 12 years ago. Um, so it was sort of almost as photorealistic as they could get for the time since then much has happened to Blender including hair modeling you know can now model individual strands of hair and, um, and and all that jazz and Big Buck Bunny is just hilarious um, and I think Big Buck Bunny's also got a 3D version so you can just watch it there and you've got all sorts of stuff making of deleted scenes uh, there's various models um, that, that they really show you how they get into this and how they how they did it. Um, uh, compositing breakdowns. There's a lot you you, you can see um, <laughs> see within there. I think it's Sintel that did the 3D version. Um, now I think they must have re um, released a 4K version um, for for a period. But yeah, it's. Uh, 
it's all the Sintel is all about um, uh, uh, a young woman uh, who rescues a dragon uh, brings it up with her and then at some point uh, the parent comes after the child and uh, swoops away and takes uh, takes the young dragon with it and then Sintel goes on um, uh, a journey to find the dragon um, I won't say how it ends but it was a bit of a tearjerker for me yeah and and, and that gives you um, some idea of the quality of, of what you're going to find when you go for these uh, Caminades uh, is a good one <coughs> uh, short Cosmos Laundromat was supposed to be the first of a series the series never happened it doesn't make that much sense in, a, in fact Conscious Cosmos Laundromat got a bit of a slating for the opening scene where a sheep is attempting to hang itself uh, didn't go down very well <laughs> um, hanging scene you know, things like that don't d tend to do it then there was a follow up to Caminandis Lamigos Agent 327 is another one Operation Barbershop there is another Agent 327 which is um, oh, what was it called I've forgotten what it was called but it was basically Agent 327 has uh, got a briefcase and he's sitting down having a having a um, uh, having a donut and this pigeon comes up and wants a piece of the donut and then all hell ensues uh, The Daily Dweebs is a short which doesn't make much sense Hero was a good one which um, starts off with one viewpoint and as you're watching it your viewpoint changes mm. uh, Coffee Run was one which led me to some questions um, Spring also didn't seem to make a, a a firm thing in my view. Sprite fright, I don't think Project High I, I don't think some of the later ones have um, Project Heist in development. Some of them don't make much sense, to be perfectly honest. And I think that this page has changed because of so many of the people who really put their effort behind Blender and made these films have, you know, showcased themselves and they're probably now in um, in the industry and, you know I don't think that we're seeing as many people um, cutting their teeth on Blender uh, in with a major production of, I'm talking major production of a few minutes, you know, <laughs> in, in some cases because it's hard work animating. Um, uh, it's not easy, so we're not seeing the kind of projects come through um, that you would see earlier on with Agent Three Two Seven, uh, Bug, Buck Bunny, Sintel, and Tears of Steel, those sorts of things. Um, you know, some of these go back to two thousand eight, two thousand twelve. Um, <coughs> But the Agent 327 seems to have bucked the trend. <laughs> but you, you can see the quality. It's it's worth looking at these. Um, Blender is pretty much the um, the the uh, tool that people are using to create. Um, and yeah, it's a very powerful system. Um, and I think it's contributed a lot to um, to what we're seeing these days. Uh, in, in terms of media and projects and work uh, it's contributing a lot um, <coughs> yeah so if you want to look at things look at these but you know you can <coughs> you can see just how much time and development effort a lot of these have taken so I think we've pretty much covered a lot of the stuff which should get you going at least being able to get the codex in which is the important thing um, understanding some of the, the simple tools to get going in basic video editing um, and the lengths that you're going to have to go to depending on what level you want to go to and one of the other things with the difference between the app image um, sort of enclosed thing and the um, going with the packages and installing the PPAs in your system to get the software in because <clears throat> a lot of this stuff is not in the Ubuntu standard libraries 
that there's there are some reasons for that and discussions about something known as SNAP and uh, I think I'll get you going on that discussion um, <coughs> Linux Mint 20 will block Ubuntu SNAP by default so if you want to, um, you can use some of the usual search terms to find out about Ubuntu Snap and what um, some people's issues are with it and why you will not find it on Linux Mint. <laughs> um, and and the discussion and reasoning about that, you should should be able to um, snap um, freeze frame this and get the URL if you wish, uh, if you wish to have a read of that, and um, exactly what is what's in a snap. And there you go. Um, snaps are several things at once. They're confined, standalone Linux applications that bundle all their necessary dependencies, which means they do not need to rely on the underlying system and can run independently of it. <coughs> that may be one of the reasons why the um, app, um, <laughs> why the um, app um, container um, failed. I don't know, but um, yeah. It's. <clears throat> uh, we'll, we'll take another look at some of the discussions about Ubuntu when we come to look at Ubuntu itself, as opposed to the Mint variant of it, and some of the discussions about things, particularly um, App Armor. Oh boy. <laughs> and, and that's one reason, you know, Snaps, App Armor, and a few other technical things are one of the reasons why I stay with Mint as opposed to Ubuntu. Um, but Ubuntu is normally the one to go to for better, more up-to-date drivers. Um, it, it's a long discussion for which there's no right or wrong. Um, you just got to understand the various points and uh, make your own decisions. So I think that pretty much covers um, video for what it is and where to look to. I mean, you can always go to a browser and say, um, what is the best Linux video editor? Um, or what, whatever you want to do, and 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 work it from there. Um, and the, the the problem with a lot of this stuff is it takes time. I'm presenting to you the what I've come to after God knows how many years um, of using Linux. But even I know that at some point some of these packages change and we move on, and you've just got to go with it. And um, yeah. Um, I think one of my main problems with KDN Live, um, one of my two problems with the current versions or later versions of KDN Live, is that they've separated out the video and audio. Um, previously, it would all be in one track. I mean, I can see why they've done it, but um, you know, <laughs> that it's doubling the amount of track um, uh, on screen. It's doubling. I, I could, if if each track had its combined video and audio, I could get four times as many tracks on screen as I can now. And if I wanted to separate out the audio from the video, I could. Um, it was a case of right clicking, separate out, and it would give me the separate, which is useful in some cases when the uh, audio is drastically out of whack with the video. I mean, for cases like this, if the audio for this happens to be slightly out of whack with uh, my mouth on the camera, I typically wouldn't bother because typically the, the small stuff, you know, people will forgive that so long as they can totally understand what's going on. Um, this is not a professional production. <laughs> but. Um, the other the other thing um that you had that uh, knocks me is it is like it happened um main title mp4 uh bring that down um and just zoom in a bit i think um <clears throat> you know it's it's a case of okay it, the the only effect that's in here you've got uh, life ga gamma gain lift gamma gain transform uh, composition, composite and transform or wipe and you know and uh, with this uh, with the audio you can just insert a volume keyframeable effect and on the earlier versions there were so many more effects and can you actually reverse a clip? Um, time remap may be it maybe the other thing is you used to be able to just get in a clip in 
and if you wanted to do um, say a reverse clip which sometimes you, you just flip the clip which you can't even do in version 17 point whatever it is that I'm using um, uh, change speed time remap I don't think you can do that either can you do it in transform there's a transform rotation composite alpha, alpha blend no oh, there you go you can add a keyframe now but it, well, why is it blacked out? Duplicate selected keyframe. Duh. <coughs> Odd. But hey ho. <laughs> um, I'm just going to cancel that and, and, and get rid of it. <coughs> so yeah, I mean the other things you can do is is, is typical. Oh, I'll typically I'll, I'll show you something, uh, something else that's handy and quick, which will should work in this version. Um, say for example you've taken a taken a TV show out with adverts you could find a particular point you could zoom in to the point where everything is keyframeable uh, the keyframes are not visible ha ha the keyframes used to be visible here um, timeline <laughs> uh, settings uh, configure KDN live project defaults proxy clip timeline that's what it is uh, separate channels there should be thumbnails in there, it may take a few seconds no jump to timeline start what I can do in the version that I'm using is um, I should have thumbnails so when um, <coughs> something finishes and the adverts start you can see the thumbnails uh, down here and uh, you can then do the cut at the precise point that you need to and then you can do the separate thing the separate time and um, yeah why is that just not working it's just not there if this was uh, me and I was settling down to use this version then pretty much I'd be going to the KDN live forum um, which is pretty much the same as anything hop onto the forum um, and ask oh, this is blocked uh, I've got to unprotect it no, no, no it is trusted so where is the forum uh, kde.org that's probably where it is uh, forum community get involved you know run through the user manuals <coughs> and uh, all the rest of it and you see this one is only showing at the, the keyframe at the start and the end of the clip whereas I would be using the keyframes in order to tell me where to clip <laughs> and then you could just uh, at the end uh, you could do that then you could select the advert and just drag cut out the advert and bring that back um, that, that's annoying <laughs> you know it, it's typically a case of going to a forum and asking the question how do I do this in this application and um, investing the time and usually in most forums people come back to you uh, relatively quickly <coughs> whoops didn't want color <laughs> oh heck <sighs> logging editing aha there we go <laughs> audio effects ah there are other effects blur and sharpen blur box depreciated grain <laughs> okay utility volume and dynamics oh there's the uh, uh, there's the gain so what can I do can I drag that in there oh yeah I can drag that in there and there's the gain so where would I look at that for that uh, gain there's the overall gain there we go so we haven't got a gain on this side we have on that side so it's a case of learning it messing around <coughs> knowing what you want to do and trying to find out and ask pretty much so that is about it for video <coughs> obviously uh, you can bring many things in from USB sticks or whatever and, um, and and bring them together and do what you need to do um, it's pretty much all possible including downloading videos as you saw <laughs> from local sources and I think I've shown the YouTube downloader for going to grab stuff from other places as well um, 
that's pretty much about it if you've got any specific questions let me know there was something in a previous video which I did actually find the resolution to but I've forgotten what it was <laughs> it was actually about what was the last video <coughs> the last video was about it was about um, no I need the other one for that I need that one and it was pictures pictures what was it with pictures that I was trying to find to do? Uh, was it with... Ah oh, yeah, I know what it was. Uh, in the browse, um, there is a way in edit... <coughs> no. <coughs> Sorry. View thumbnail details. And you can have rating um, in there. And you can see that's four stars. <coughs> So you can add things like the ratings in there. It's just a matter of uh, date, image size, yada yada, wh whatever you want to view. Um, image size, file size, so you can view all that in the thumbnails. That was one of the things that I was trying to do but couldn't. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's it on videos. I'm, I'm not sure what the next one is going to be. Uh, have I done audio? No, I haven't done audio. So I think we're going to have to have a look at audio in the next one. So until then, uh, take care of yourselves. See you on the next video and uh, ciao for now.